If you're looking for something useful to 3D print, here's some fantastic workshop tools from the community. If the 3D printing bug has bitten you hard, particularly modifying them, there's a fair chance that most of the 3D prints you do are 3D printing parts for your 3D printer. There are some great tools for this, like this V-Roller Bearing Extractor by Lewis Teams. Let's say you've got a flat spot on one of your wheels. This tool offers an easy way to separate the wheel from the bearing so you can get your machine moving smoothly. I happen to think that's a really good tool, but it's not going to impress your maker buddies who aren't into 3D printing and think it's only for making novelty parts. In this video, we're going to fix that by making a bunch of great tools to use in your workshop. All of these are from members of the community who have generously provided them for free on Thingiverse. So let's celebrate their work and upgrade our tool set. We'll cover printing, assembly and use as necessary so you can follow along at home. We're going to do this in categories, and the first one is tools to find the center of things. The first one is by Mobilo, and it's a center finder for straight pieces of material. What you're seeing here is the printed pieces of the FDM version. Their general arrangement is as you can see here, and like a lot of the tools in this video, if you have any undersized holes, it's good to open them up with the correct drill bit. Do check the instructions, however, because some holes are precisely the right size, for an M3 bolt to cut its own thread as you insert it. I opted to start by attaching the center section to the two small arms and then mounting that on top of the main legs before using another four M3 bolts to put the whole thing together. The holes in the center piece are for putting a pencil, pen or scribe through, which means that if they're undersized, it's worth opening up once again with the appropriately sized drill bit. Here's how it works. Traditionally, if we wanted to draw a line down the center of a piece of material, we would need to measure across the width in at least two places, divide, and then draw a line between the two. But with this tool, all we need to do is put it over the top, swivel the arms to make it close on both sides, and then run it along the length with a pencil or a scribe in the middle. This should give us a line perfectly down the middle of our piece of stock. It works just the same on other materials, and we can use it on metal for instance, with the largest hole being the right size for a Sharpie. Our next center finder is from Marius Hornberger, and I've showed this on the past, but it's worth revisiting. No assembly required and operation as follows. Let's say we want to find the exact center point of this round object, so we can drill a hole. We simply place the center finder hard against one side, mark a line using the cutout trench in the middle, Rotate the tool to a new position and repeat with another line. If you're feeling pedantic, you can also do a third line and if that matches, it should verify that your object is round. That should leave you the exact center ready to drill to perfection. There's plenty of these round center finders to choose from, but this one also has the advantage of working on square stock. We put the tool against one corner, again draw a line through the center trench, position on another corner, draw a second line and when we remove the tool, the two lines should overlap directly in the center. This center finder for a drill by DeGent is something I didn't know I needed, but now I'm glad I have. There's only two pieces and we need a single M4 bolt to join them. As we insert it, it's gonna cut its own thread and we need to adjust how tight we do it to make sure that there's no wobble, but it can also rotate freely. And this is what it's for. Let's say we need to drill a hole through this round pipe and we need it exactly in the middle but lining that up is awfully hard. We remove our drill bit and insert the printed tool into the chuck. Finger tight is fine. As you can see, as we position the pipe underneath, the dial will point to the middle when it's exactly in the center. Now is a good time to use some sort of fast clamp to hold the vise in place, remove the tool, reinsert the drill bit, and then drill our hole in the perfect position. This plastic pipe is pretty forgiving, but on narrow metal tube, it's gonna stop the drill bit from shooting off to the side. I think we're off to a good start, so let's continue with some measurement tools. This screw measuring device by CMH, I've also covered in the past, but absolutely deserves its place in this video. I chose to print it in white and then simply use a Sharpie to make the printed labels legible. This simple tool makes sorting and storing loose fasteners very quick and easy. We can check both the diameter and the length in just a few seconds. With this design catering for M2 up to M5 with a maximum length of 50 millimeters. 
I've found this handy printed tool is in constant demand because it helps me keep my spare fasteners organized. Next up is this fillet gauge by TNA TMR. And once again, this is deceptively simple, but useful. This is another tool I opted to print in one color and then use a Sharpie to highlight the labels. And this is what it's for. Let's say we need to measure something accurately for the purposes of a CAD drawing. Calipers will allow us to measure most exterior dimensions with a minimum of fuss. But what about these tricky exterior fillets? You can kind of eyeball them, but the result isn't really going to be accurate. And here's where our fillet gauge comes in. We simply try the different sizes until we find one that matches. In this case, this exterior fillet is 5mm and this larger one on the other side is 8mm. This means that the CAD model that we're basing these measurements on is going to be quite accurate. The tool can also do internal fillets, but only for 5 and 3mm on each end. We can see here 3mm does not fit, but if I rotate the tool, I have a nice match for 5mm for this fillet. Let's measure some angles with this printed tool by Dell 1979. And this one is kind of like a fancier sliding bevel. You need to print two long arms, two short arms, and four of the tightening knobs. The knobs have a hex cutout where you're meant to put the head of an M4 bolt. But the only ones I had, had this square washer permanently attached. However, I found that I could still use a normal hex head bolt because it had a fairly tight interference fit on the sides and just to be safe, I used a little super glue around the edges to hold it in place. Assembly is the same for each of the four junctions. With the side that was facing down towards the bed facing up, we push through the tightening knob and bolt, then we flip the whole assembly over, get an M4 nut, rest it in the trench on the underside, and turn the knob to engage the thread. Repeat four times and the tool is assembled. You should be able to loosen any of the knobs to free up the assembly, move it into position, and then tighten the knobs to lock it in place. The simplest way to use this tool is to move it to match the outside shapes of an angled object. You can then lock the angle in place, move to another material, and then trace the exact angle. What I found is a better use is to use it to trace really hard to reach and complicated objects, like the angle on this front winch bar. That angle can be then measured by using a protractor, and then you can base your CAD design around this angle to ensure that your part has a perfect fit. One more for measuring, and it's this lockable contour gauge by TJALF. There's a variety of sizes available to print on Thingiverse, and you're seeing the parts here for the default smallest size. We want these blue sections to slide nicely against each other, so I lowered my solid infill flow rate. You can see little gaps there, and that kept the top surface quite smooth. For the size I'm showing, you'll need 41 of these in total. We start assembly by inserting a captive M3 nut, and then we lay all of the little fingers in one half of the case, making sure that they're all facing the same direction. You'll probably need to squeeze the existing ones into place to slide the last one in as it's quite tight, but this is normal. And once they're in place, we can put on the other half of the case and use some M4 bolts cutting their own thread to attach the two halves together. We then have a printed spring that pushes in from the end. We insert our fifth bolt, line it up with the locking finger, and then screw that down before the case bolts can be tightened for good. I found mine was a little stiff at first, but running it back and forth took off the high spots and gave me smoother operation. So what do we do with it? I don't have an actual scenario that I need it for right now, so here's a simulated one. Let's say I'm cutting a piece of flooring and it needs to match this complicated contour. I position the tool in the corner and then carefully push the fingers forward so they match the contour of the object I'm trying to trace. Once I've got them all accurately in position, I can apply a little bit of tension with the locking arm to hold my contour in place. You can then trace your contour to your other material, and after cutting, you should hopefully find that it matches the contour of what you measured quite accurately. Our next category is sanding and painting. Regulars to this channel know that I hate sanding, so I'll be quick on this section, but hopefully there's something of use for you. First up, we have this mini sanding block by Just Ignorant. It's more effective than holding sandpaper by hand and definitely more ergonomic. I printed this one overnight and the cold temperatures meant it lifted and warped a little, but that doesn't affect its operation. We're going to place two M3 screws in from the bottom and then we're going to hammer in two M3 nuts into the tightening knobs. Our clamping piece then slides over the top 
and we secure the two knobs just loosely for now. Finally, on the underside, we have two caps to cover the tops of the screws. To use, we cut some sandpaper one and a half inches wide, and if you're like me, you're gonna struggle to slide it in from the side, but eventually I did endure and managed to get it in place before doing up the two locking knobs. I don't have anything that needs sanding right now, so forgive this poor example, but this is a great tool for ensuring your sanding surface is flat and for keeping your fingers clean and out of harm's way. And as a bonus, you can always angle the tool forwards or back to use the rounded edges as appropriate. Let's switch our attention to painting with these serious paint cones by J Max. Because these are tiny, they're a great way to use up the remains of filament on a near empty spool. I don't need to, but let's pretend I want to paint this flat tray. If I paint it flat on the cardboard, the paint risks running over the edge and gluing it down to the cardboard, ruining the paint and making my life harder. So these paint cones come in handy for propping up object off your flat surface, which lets you paint safely down to the edge without any risk of the object getting stuck. What makes this design extra handy are the holes in the bottom so you can screw them on to your sacrificial painting surface. This means that they'll no longer slide around and that means when you transport the object that you're painting from your work area to your painting area, you don't have to worry about it falling off and getting dirty, especially when it has wet paint. Let's get back on track with some tools for striking and cutting. First up is the Thwack from Mr. Megatronic and I learned about this print from my patrons. It's basically a plastic handsome hammer. It seemed like it needed support material, so I opted for this remix by Low351, which due to the way the layers are stacked, is going to be slightly weaker, but that shouldn't matter because this hammer is for delicate jobs. The instructions call for 100% infill, so in your hand it feels quite weighty and solid. I also think it's quite handsome as promised. Why do we need a plastic hammer? Well sometimes we need quite a soft touch like installing this diffuser onto this LED torch. The thwack is the right tool here because it won't break anything underneath and it won't mark the surface. You can buy plastic hammers from the hardware store, so why not print one instead? Next up, this tube cutter by Predator Junior, and I reckon this is a really clever design. This is the only print in this video that I needed to apply support for, so I manually placed it in Simplify 3D. I think, however, I was a bit overzealous because after it was printed, I remembered that I had to remove all of this support. It took me about 10 minutes to snap it free without any damage to the model, which meant I was ready for assembly. The blades this tube cutter uses are the ones found as spares in the handle of your box cutter. I found that the notch on the printed part matched the blade exactly, so once the blade was in place, I got the second retaining piece and clamped the whole lot together with two M4 bolts which cut their own thread as they went in. For me, there's two areas that make this a clever design. The first is that the blade is completely concealed, so it should be very hard for your finger to accidentally be cut. The second is this box, which holds the cutter closed, ensuring no accidents while it's in storage. The smallest cutout is actually the ideal size for cutting PTFE tube. And I found the other cutouts were great for automotive use, in this case, silicon vacuum hose. I found that if I rotated it as I applied pressure, I would get an extremely nice flat cut on the end of the tube. Our final category is clamping tools. There are a lot of printable vices on Thingiverse, like this mini machine vise by Hi-Mec, but I went for this even smaller remixed nano vise by Prima. Based on the Thingiverse comments, I printed the knurled screw part three times at 100%, 95 and 90% scale. For me, the 100% scale screw fit perfectly, but if you were having fitment issues, you could scale this part down. One area I did need to make an alteration was using a blade to take the sharp edge off these inner mating surfaces. After doing this, and before your final assembly, I'd recommend applying some grease to inside the thread and the ball on the end of the screw. The screw can then be inserted into the main body so the head sits just proud. We then slide the clamp in from above and continue to turn the screw which slots the three parts together and completes our assembly. I think a vise this small is particularly good for jewellery makers. Forgive me if I don't actually file my wedding ring but hopefully you can see that it's a pretty good way of holding it for some filing and sanding. It also holds it quite securely as well. 
This is also a great tool for holding small and fiddly work pieces when you want to use a sharp tool like a Dremel and you don't really want your fingers anywhere near the blade. It's also great for clamping thin parts where your fingers might otherwise get in the way. Our final printed tool is this Cant Twist Clamp by 3D Printing World. This clamp does have a lot of parts to be printed, but it also has excellent dedicated assembly instructions embedded on the Thingiverse page. The only deviation I had from these instructions was again applying synthetic grease inside the threads as well as any junctions where parts were meant to rotate. It was also an excellent demonstration of the thwack for tapping together the pieces of the frame as well as inserting the locking pins without damaging the printed clamp. This clamp has a wide range of motion, opening up quite wide, yet closing up enough to hold quite slender objects. I think this is an ideal tool for clamping together the halves of objects that you're gluing together. This mechanism gives you a lot of control as well as sufficient strength. So now we're going to have to print some more. That brings us to the end of my list, but you should know with 3D printing you can go much, much further. If you have a Dremel tool, you can convert it into a table saw, a mini disc sander, or even a mini pedestal drill. And you can even convert your standard hand drill into a drill press of sorts. There's a lot of great printable tools online, so please share with me and everyone else your favorite in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing your own tools. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.